us from Rutgers, and uh, he'll be around both today and tomorrow if you want to have any further physics conversations with him. Uh, okay. Okay, so first of all, thank you for this opportunity to talk about my work today. So today I'm going to talk about Algeria's Douglas theory and s theory. And I have three collaborators. Matt Britton, Matt Britton at Rutgers, and Simone in Bristol, and uh, Kelsey is at Free Mary. And our paper didn't appear yet, but uh, I hope it will, it will appear very soon. So um, my talk today contains two different ingredients. The first one is the s duality s duality is a symmetry between the strong coupling and the weak coupling of the cell. For example, let's consider SU2, n equals 2 SU2 gauge series with four flavors. Then, because the number of flavors is twice the number of colors, you can calculate the beta function coefficient of the uh, gauge coupling, and you see that the beta function is vanishing. So in that sense, this gauge coupling is exactly marginal, and this theory is conformal. So this is a very nice property of this theory of SU2 gauge series with four flavors. And uh, so this tau is a combination of theta and rho and the yam mills coupling. It's a marginal coupling, which means that changing this tau doesn't break any superconformal symmetry. You can freely change this tau without breaking superconformal symmetry. So you can, for example, take this tau to infinity or zero or whatever I mean, value you like. So this is one thing. And actually, this theory has a, another very nice property, which is an s theory invariance. Um, everything, any correlation function in this theory, or any physical quantity of this theory, is symmetric, invariant, but symmetric under this transformation of the gauge coupling, which is called s theory transformation. And why this is interesting? Well, because this transformation maps g equal infinity to equal to g equal zero, which means that strong coupling limit of this theory is mapped to weak coupling limit of this theory by this transformation. And because the theory is symmetric or invariant under this transformation, the physics at this strong coupling is equivalent, basically equivalent to the physics at g equal zero. You see the full symmetry to zero? Sorry? When theta n go away, Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I assume theta equals zero. Yeah, when you have a theta equal theta, non-vanishing theta, then this transformation gets much more complicated. But, uh, you know, as an example, when theta is zero, then g equals infinity is mapped to g equals zero. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to talk about much more detail about this in, in, in the later section. So this is one thing. I mean, s theory is one thing. And the second ingredient is the Algeria's Douglas theory. <coughs> This is a class of 4D n equals to superconformal field theory with uh, Coulomb branch operators of fractional dimensions. A Coulomb branch operator is an operator whose web is parameterizing the Coulomb branch. So for example, in the case of SUM gauge theory, uh, the Coulomb branch operator is just a trace phi, phi square, trace phi cube, trace phi to the four, phi is a uh, adjoint scalar in the vector model. Right? So in the case of Lagrangian theory, like SUM gauge theory, this Coulomb branch operator has integer dimension. Like trace phi square has dimension two, trace phi cube has dimension three. But the, this type of theory, which I'm gonna review later, this type of theory has a Coulomb branch operator whose dimension is fractional. So you don't have a Lagrangian description. And actually this theory is strongly coupled. So there's no weak coupling limit. So you can't use perturbation theory or something like that. So this is quite mysterious theory. So for example, because you don't know the Lagrangian, for example, you cannot use the supersymmetric localization to calculate the partial function or superconformal index. It's usually impossible to calculate these quantities. There are lots of conjectures using AGT relation or many things. They, they are quite interesting, but they are still conjecture because we cannot calculate these guys from the physical definition of the theory. Actually, uh, I guess this type of theory doesn't have a physical definition rigorous definition of the theory. We have many examples, but we don't have rigorous definition. So up to here, everything is mysterious. It seems that there is no hope, but actually we know the cyber written code of this type of theory, which means that 
When you go to the Coulomb branch, the theory, then you know everything in the IR. Because the cyber written graph characterized all the IR physics in the Coulomb branch. So because you know the cyber written graph, you know the physics in the Coulomb branch. And also, you know some information about the flavor symmetry because the cyber written solution or cyber written graph uh, is uh, capturing some well, property about the flavor So almost everything is unknown <laughs> except for this guy. That's the Archer Stafford study. And I'm gonna review, I'm gonna review something about this Archer Stafford study later. So these are the two ingredients of my talk. And uh, today I wanna combine these two. How to combine? Well, some of the Archer Stafford theory is known to have are known to have flavor symmetry like SU2 or SU3. Even though you don't know the Lagrangian of this theory, you know the presence of the flavor symmetry then you can try to gauge this flavor symmetry by adding, for example, SU2 vector multiple here, and try to couple SU2 vector multiple with this sector by gauging this flavor symmetry. Or you can do something more drastic, like this. You can bring two copies of this guy and gauge diagonal SU2 flavor symmetry by adding SU2 vector multiple. And you can also add some hypermultiple fundamental hypermultiplet or adjunct hypermultiplet or something like that. So that, you, this gauge coupling becomes exactly marginal. Because the beta function of this gauge coupling is uh, get some contribution from these matter sectors. So if you change the number of hypermultiplets, you get different beta function partition. So you can tune the number of hypermultiplets so that this SC2 gauging is marginal. Then what's happening? Well, you again have exactly marginal coupling here. And this is exactly marginal, so you can tune this guy to any value. Then, for example, you can ask this kind of question. What's happening at the strong coupling of this gauge coupling? Because this is a free parameter, you can tune any, you can tune this to any value. So what's happening if G is infinity, for example? Or another way of saying is, is, is there any analog of S duality in for this theory? If these guys are just a uh, hypermotive breath, then we know that there is an S duality which connects G equals zero and G equals infinity. So you know everything about the strong coupling limit. But what about this? What about in this case? Right? In this case, in this theory, is there any analog of S duality? That's our question. And today, our answer to that question, our answer is that, yes, there is a generalization of S duality. And this is a brief summary of our work. So we study the generalization of S duality for 40 n equals 2 super conformal gauge series coupled to the ultra stuff theory. Um, as far as I know, and as far as we know, uh, nobody has ever discussed this kind of topic. Well, many people discuss ultra stuff theory, and many people discuss the S duality, but I guess nobody has ever combined these two. And I guess there are many reasons for that. But today, we want to do this. And particularly, I'm considering this type of theory. The one including SU2 gauge group together with eight ultra structural sectors, and the one with SU3 gauge group together with ultra structural sectors plus some hypers. Is there a particular reason to restrict the two Oh, no, that's just, a good question. Just because it's the same. Yes, because even in the Lagrangian case, you can consider SU2 gauge theory with four flavor, and SU3 gauge theory with six flavor. Both are super conformal, so you can discuss S theory. But there is a huge difference between SU2 n equal four and SU3 n equal six in the in, in the discussion of S theory. There is a huge difference. That's why we I want to talk about the, these two. But uh, there are a bunch of examples, and actually we found an infinite number of examples of this kind of S theory. So yeah. my question was actually. So I guess you have two copies of... Like, oh, I'm sorry, I see, I see, I see. Why the number of these guys, too? Yeah. I guess there is no physical reason. I guess there is no physical reason. But technically, this type of theory is easy to discuss, easy to analyze. I guess that's the reason. Yes. But there is no physical reason. So you could consider, for example, you could, get, you could bring four copies of Algebra Stockholm's theory or something like that. I believe so. 
Thanks. Okay, so this is a brief summary of our work. So today in my talk, I'm going to review first in the next section, I'm going to review what is the usual S theory for Lagrangian. And after that, I'm going to give you a brief review about the, what, what is the algebra standard theory. And then I'm going to combine these two to discuss the theory with SCU2 gauge theory plus algebra standard sector, or SCU3 gauge theory plus algebra standard sector. And I'm going to summarize. So let me first discuss, let me first review the S theory for Lagrangian theory. This is the usual story about the uh, S theory. So um, let me again go back to the original simplest example of uh, SCU2 gauge theory with four factors. So um, we have n equals to supersymmetry and the vector multiple, SCU2 vector multiple and the hyper multiple. Four, four fundamental hypermodels. And because of the n equals 2 supersymmetry, the bosonic component of vector multiple is a gauge view and the adjoint scalar. Both are in the adjoint representation of SC2. And there is also a spinner, I mean, Gageino, but I omit that. I, mean, I just wrote down, I just wrote down the bosonic component. And also there's a hypermultiple, which each of the, each hypermultiple is a is a, a contains two n equal one chiral multiples. So there are two scalars, q and q theta, for each flavor. And we have four copies of that because we have four flavors. And the, you can calculate the uh, beta function of this gauge coupling. Then what you found is beta function is proportional to this kind of factor. Up to numerical factor, it's proportional to nf minus nc. NF, nf is the number of flavor, which is four now. And NC is the number of color, which is two now. So this guy is <coughs> vanishing. So, and because of n equals two supersymmetry, I mean, the beta function, per parameter beta function is exact, one loop exact, so this is an exact operation. And because this is vanishing, this gauge coupling is exactly one. So gauge coupling is now theta angle plus one over Yamaha's coupling square. So, now I want to tell you I want to show you the s theory symmetry of this theory. And I guess the best way to do that is probably to look at the Coulomb branch of this theory. So let me first talk about what is the Coulomb branch of this theory. Okay. SU2 gauge theory is popular. Coulomb branch is a vacuum motorized space parameterized by that of the adjoint scalar in the vector mode thread. So I'm going to give, give a bed to this which is which is characterized by this u. I mean, phi is not gauge invariant. It's, it's, it's in the other representation, but trace phi square is a gauge invariant object. So the Coulomb branch is parameterized by this guy, which breaks the conformal invariance because of that has a scaling momentum. And the, but we don't, I mean, we demand that the web of the scalar guys in the hypermultiple is vanishing. This is a Coulomb branch. The Coulomb branch is complex one-dimensional branch, parameterized by this U. Now, what is the physics in the Coulomb branch in the IR? Well, this is a usual problem of the Higgs mechanism, right? When the algebraic scale in the vector multiple gets a uh, bad, then the gauge symmetry, SU2 gauge symmetry, is broken down to some subgroup, which doesn't break, which doesn't change the web of phi. In this case, that is U1. So SU2 gauge symmetry is now broken down to U1 gauge symmetry. And the IR physics in the Coulomb branch is therefore U1 gauge theory, characterized by Zyrogen Witten solution. So I'm, today I'm not going to talk about the detail of Zyrogen Witten solution, that the, there is a solution, there is a way to analyze the IR physics of this theory. And uh, I just, I just want to mention that, that there is a double Boston and monopole associated with the Higgs. Okay, so I just tell you what is the result of zyro written solution. I have no time to de derive this result, but I, I just want to tell you what is the result of zyro written. In this case of SC2 gauge series four flavors, the zyro written solution, zyro written curve, is a genus one curve like this. And um, it's a function of physical parameter. So when you change, for example, gauge coupling, when you change the Coulomb branch parameter, then this 
know, shape and the you know, size of this genus one curve gets changed. And what's the relation between this curve and physical quantity? Well, it's known that the IR physics in the Coulomb branch is fully characterized by this curve. How, what's the relation between physical quantity and this curve? For example, as I said before, uh, in the Coulomb branch, there is a double boson, massive double boson, a massive monopole associated with the Higgs mechanism. And it's usually difficult to calculate the masses of these guys because there are many quantum corrections. But because of n equals 2 supersymmetry, actually you can exactly calculate the masses of these guys. And the answer is you can just calculate this period of two independent one cycle of the Zygorbitian curve, then that's more or less, I mean, actually precisely the absolute value of this guy is the mass of the double boson and monopole. So when you have a curve, you can calculate the period and you get the exact masses of double boson and monopole, which includes all the quantum corrections. This is the essence of the Zygorbitian distance solution. And now, I wanna, so what I, what I want to say is that when you have a curve, you get the exact IR physics. Then when you have a different curve, you could have a different physics in the IR. When you have the same curve, you should have the same physics in the IR. Now, what is the symmetry of this curve? It's known that the, well, this curve depends on these parameters, but it's known that this curve is symmetric under this SL2Z transformation generated by this curve, which means that the IR physics in the Coulomb branch is symmetric under this transformation. And what is interesting is that the, this guy called s duality exchanges these two cycles, one cycles, which means that you know, when you change, when you replace tau with minus one over tau, you should replace double boson and monopole for electric guys and magnetic guys. That's the essence of s duality Now, what is the physical meaning of these SL2Z variants? That's quite interesting from the viewpoint of this coupling space, marginal coupling space. How is a priori this guy? So a priori we have to think of all the upper half plane probably. Why upper half plane? Because the imaginary part is one over G sphere. If the imaginary part is negative, then we should think of you know imaginary G. So probably we don't need to talk about that. So a priori we have to think of all the upper half plane, but because of the SO2Z invariance, we only need to think of this region. And all the other regions are connected to this region by SL2Z uh, transformation. So physically independent region of the coupling is this guy. And this guy, this region contains a cusp at infinity, tau equal i infinity, which is a weak coupling cusp. Because if tau is i infinity, this guy becomes i, uh, I infinity, which means that g equals zero. So this point. I mean, this point is a weak coupling of the theory. That's okay because we know everything about the weak coupling in it. We can use probability theory. But what about the strong coupling? Well, strong coupling means g equal to infinity. Then imaginary tau should be zero, which means that we should think of these lines, horizontal line. But this region doesn't hit this horizontal line, which means that any you know any strong coupling limit is dual to some point, actually weak coupling limit in this region. So you don't need to worry about the strong coupling limit because the physics at strong coupling limit is the same as physics at weak coupling limit. And I should have shown you. So, yeah. so when you have a strong coupling limit, for example, tau equals zero of some dual frame, then you can map this theory to a weak coupling description by SO2Z transformation. So basically, the physics of the strong coupling is identical to the physics of weak coupling. This is the you know, beauty of s theory. Okay. So this is the simplest example of s theory. But uh, in the higher rank case, like SU3 with six flavors, you have something more drastic. So let me talk about that. So we start with, we start with SU3 gauge theory with six flavors. Then again, the number of flavors is a, is a twice the number of colors. So again, this theory is conformal, and you have an exactly marginal coupling. And now, you don't have SO2Z invariance. You now have some smaller symmetry group. 
which is for gamma zero of two. The name doesn't matter. The thing is, here we have two instead of one. So we have a smaller symmetry group, which means that we have a larger fundamental domain. Or any any two points in this region gives you give you two different physics. So we should think of any point, all the points in this region. Then we have two special points now. Well, again, we have a weak coupling cusp at this point. That's okay, because we know everything about that. But what about these points? I mean, this guy and this guy is identical, or identical, so they are identical. But this guy and that guy are different, because there is no symmetry transformation which connects these two. So what's happening here? This is a new cusp for SU3 and SU6. And the physics at this point should be something different from the physics at this point. So what's happening at this point? This question was uh, very difficult, but uh, so I mean, answer. This question was answered by Zyber and Alvarez about, the, about seven years ago. So they claim that there is a dual description. Uh, so we started with the SU3 gauge theory with six flavors at the coupling tau, but this theory is dual or identical to, the, to some different theory with different coupling. This gauge coupling tau is mapped to uh, this tau prime, which is one over one minus tau, but now this tau prime is a gauge coupling of SU2 instead of SU3. So we have different gauge groups. And we have different matter sector. We have one fundamental here, we have three fundamental. And we have something very mysterious here, which is a super conformal field theory with E6 rates. And there is no Lagrangian description. But this is different from so-called algebraic Douglas theory. I mean, this is a different class of theories without Lagrangian description. And these days, this is called the T3 theory by Guy Otto. So I don't want to talk about the detail of this theory. But what, I'm, what I want to say is that when you have SU3 and F equals 6 guy, the S dual description could be something with different gauge group and different model sector. And why this is interesting? Well, because if this guy hit the, hits the strong coupling task, then tau equal 1 maps to tau prime equal i infinity, which means that this SU2 becomes weakly coupling. So the physics of the strong coupling of this theory is identical to the physics of this theory at weak coupling. So again, any correlation function is finite, even at tau equal 1, because the correlation function of this guy should be calibrated in, in this theory. Everything should be fine, yeah. So the previous example, you did have a Lagrangian description, but now you don't? Is that a... Oh, even in a dual frame. Uh -huh. I see. Uh, yeah, in this, that's a good question. So in this case, yes. Each of these sides is Lagrangian. Lagrangian. Yeah, that's true. Then so here, one why of is it that here you don't have Lagrangian and the other, the other case it doesn't yeah, That's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. Um, sorry, this is a bad thing. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so here, I was talking about tau equal one point, which is at this point. And the reason why I, I was thinking of this point is that this is another cusp, which is different from the weak coupling cusp. Because, you know, okay, so this, this is a SU3 gauge theory with six flavors. And the symmetry group is not SL to Z, but some smaller. So this theory is not so symmetric compared to the SU2, I mean, previous, okay, previous case. But then, you know, all, I mean, this region is small, I mean, sorry, larger than this previous region. Which means that in the previous case of the SU2 gauge theory, this point is identical or dual to that point or that point. So we don't need to distinguish this point and the weak coupling of it because they are identical. And because, that's because we have a larger symmetric group, SO2C symmetric group. But here we have a smaller symmetry group, which is a, well, this guy, subgroup of S to Z. We don't have a symmetry of S to Z. So we have to think of larger prime, I mean, covering space, larger parameter space. Then now, this point is totally different from that point. 
So we have something different. But do we know the field content and the associated dimensions? Uh, That's a good question. Conformal dimension. Usually that problem is quite difficult. But, mm -hmm. but some time ago, Gayotto Razamakrasberry proposed some, they conjecture the so-called super conformal index of, of, of that mystery theory, that guy, that guy. And super conformal index captures the spectrum of so-called BTS operators. So they know some class of operators of this theory, and they know scaling dimension of that, that operators, mm -hmm. and they know the charges, of global charges of that, those operators. They don't know everything. I mean, you know, there is some, something mysterious here, but they know some subclass of operators. But that's still conjecture. But it seems that, that their conjecture is correct. Yeah. OK. So yeah, so what I want to say here is that in the general case, the strong coupling, weak coupling theory connects some, you know, different theories. On one side you have strong coupling, and on the other hand, on the other side you have weak coupling, but uh, it's still S2. So you could have different age group and model sectors in general. Okay. So let me give you a short summary of this section. So the S theory is a theory between. Uh, weak coupling and a, uh, weak coupling and a strong, strong coupling of the series, and in some cases, in a dual, both of the dual, both sides of the dual are the same series. But in general, they could be different. They could contain different gauge groups. They could contain different model sectors. Excuse me. Sure. Isn't there this notion of a Langlands dual group? Um, I, I was just wondering how does it happen that any one in one case, SU3 goes to SU2. I see. I mean, even in n equal 4, there is a subtlety of black rock dual, right? I mean, SU2 maps to SU2 maps something, or SU3. I mean, yeah, but you're saying, what's happened to the black rock dual if you have different gauge groups? I believe. Well, I was, I'm, I'm not really, actually not at all familiar with that stuff. I was just, Thinking that each group has a lang its Langlands dual, and I was expecting okay, that on the okay. S dual side you always oh, see, see this. I think mm -hmm. I think I should say I should say that this guy and this guy are not Langlands dual. So which means that n equals two S duality has something different from you know Langlands dual. I mean, in some cases, I mean the gauge groups are connected by Langlands dual, but in n equals two uh, S duality. I mean, it's not necessarily the case. If you just think of n equal four uh, S theory, then I believe the gauge groups in the one side and the other side should be connected by Langlands theory. I believe so. I'm not quite sure the other. I believe so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so this is a short summary. So, is there any question I mean, about the S theory? So we have two examples. SU2 with NF equal 4 or SU3 with NF equal 6. Both are super conformal. But in this case, we have different description in a dual frame. So, yeah. And uh, I want to generalize this story to some theories involving algebra studies. Okay. So, then, let me review the, what, what is the algebra stuff theory. Algebra stuff theory. So, this is the second ingredient of my talk. And uh, priori, this has nothing to do with S theory. So, I mean, this this part, this section has nothing to do with the previous section. A priori, for now. Okay, so Archer's Dagger theory is a class of 40 n equals 2 super conformal theories with Coulomb branch operator of fractional dimensions. And usually, they don't have a branch on the bridge. But sometimes, or often, they are obtained as an IR CFT of some Lagrangian theory. So you can start with some Lagrangian theory, and you can flow along the algebra flow, and in the end, at the end of the algebra flow, you could get so-called algebra step of theory as an IRC. So let me give you one example today. So today I'm going to start with SU2 gauge theory with the three flavors, like this, with n equals two supersymmetric. And this was first studied by these people. And because the number of flavors is less than twice the number of colors, this theory is not conformal, but asymptotically free. 
So you have a dynamical scale, dynamically generated scale instead of an I mean, exactly marginal company. And but you still have a cyber within solution, so you know anything, I mean, you know everything in the Coulomb branch, in the IR. So let me go to the Coulomb branch by turning on this bed of the agile scale in the vector model, right? And let me also turn on the fork masses, bare masses for the forks, forks in the scalars in the in this hyper mode. Let me turn on this mass. Common masses I'm gonna turn on. Then, well, usually if these guys are different, then all the you know all the flavor symmetries are broken. But the for this particular choice of bare masses, you still have SU3 flavor symmetry, which is acting on this hyper mode. Okay, so this is my setup. Now, what's happening in the Coulomb branch? Well, again, you have a Higgs mechanism, and the IR physics in the Coulomb branch is again U1 gauge zero, characterized by zagreb witten solution. But here, the detail of cyber witten count doesn't matter. I just want to tell you what's happening in the Coulomb branch. The well, Coulomb branch is parameterized by this web of the scalar, and this is a complex one-dimensional one frame, which is Coulomb branch. And at generic point in the Coulomb branch, you just have U1 gauge theory. Everything else is massive. Only U1 gauge field is massless. And everything else, like the double box on the monopole, they are massive at generic point in the Coulomb branch. But there are five, five special points in the Coulomb branch at which you have a massless monopole, or massless, additional massless DPS states. For example, if U is equal to lambda sphere, lambda is a dynamic scale. If U is lambda square, then the monopole becomes massless. Because the masses of these guys get quantum corrections, but you know the quantum correction because you know the cyber solution. So you can solve the equation of the masses of monopole, mass of the monopole becomes zero. You can solve that equation, then you get this point. So at this point, monopole becomes massless. Or at this point, diode, some diode becomes massless. Or there are three quark. I mean, three points at which some four becomes massless. And the locus of these guys depends on these parameters, dynamical scale, level, uh, sorry, this parameter, dynamical scale or bare mass of the forks. And this is a generic situation. And well, this is also perturbative computation. Oh, no, no, this is non portality This is less Exactly. Exactly. Exact, including all the quantum pressure. That's the beauty of cyber mm -hmm. Yeah, they propose a solution which includes all the quantum corrections. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, Algeres, what Algeres and Douglas thought about is that what's happening if you tune this M, the M of the course, so that these singularities collide with this guy, like, like this, then at this point, not only monopole, but also quarks become massless. Mass so what's the physics at this point? That's what they thought about. Or to be more precise, when you go to this point in the Coulomb branch, and when you go to the deep IR and along the RG flow, then what is the IRC? That's the question. Well, along the RG flow, all the massive degrees of freedom should be integrated out, right? Along the RG flow. Then in the end, you should just get massless degrees of freedom. But what is the massless degrees of freedom here? Well, there are three quarks massless and monopole massless. So the IR CFT should contain monopole, massless monopole, and the massless quarks. And of course, massless elongation. But the question is, can you imagine any Lagrangian to describe describing this kind of physics? So far, we have no idea to write down Lagrangian. I one. thought you were just tuning the mass parameters. Why did they become massless? So you just tune the masses, I think. Masses, I'm oh, sorry. This guy is a bare mass. And uh, uh, here I'm, I'm calculating the mass of the quarks, including all the quantum corrections. You know, we are going to the Coulomb branch, right? Mm -hmm. So there is an RG flow. The theory is a, a compound. There is an RG flow. And we should calculate all the quantum corrections. That depends on this web of the mm -hmm. Higgs. So when you change the web of Higgs, then effective mass of the core or effective mass of monopole diode, they are changing. So we are tuning U and M, their mass, so that 
vulnerable and forks become massive, massive in a quantum sense. Yeah, that's quite non trivial. And uh, we can do that because we know the uh, quantum correct, corrected solution, I mean, quantum corrected mass, which was obtained by using cyber written solution. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So the question is what is the IR CFD here? <coughs> Well, we don't know the Lagrangian for that theory, so we just have a name of that theory, which is called Arthur's Douglas theory. I believe Arthur's and Douglas didn't use this <laughs> terminology, but for now, many people are using this terminology. And there are many, many such examples of theories with uh, you know, this type of property, that this theory, particularly this theory obtained from this SU2 gauge theory with three frames, this theory is sometimes called A1B4 theory for some reason that I don't know. I mean, there's some reason. Uh, the name doesn't matter, but uh, this particular theory is called A1B4 theory. Okay, so let me talk about a little bit more about the uh, property of this A1B4 theory. Well, we have a conformal point in the parameter space. I mean, we know that if small m is lambda, and if u is lambda square, then the theory is conformal. But, and we know, we also know that the flavor symmetry is SU3, remaining flavor symmetry is SU3. Then, let me think of a little bit deviation from this CFD point, like the usual quantum field theory analysis. You know, these are the parameters of the theory. And at this point, you have a conformal theory. But what happens if you, you know, if you slightly change this M and U, what happens? You can calculate the scaling dimension of these guys, which is actually in this case one over two and the three halves. And the interpretation of this guy is like this. First of all, we interpret this delta U as a wave of some Coulomb branch operator. So we know that there is a Coulomb branch operator of dimension three halves. And then, because you have an operator, Instead of turning on the bed, you can also perturb uh, the theory by you know, this perturbation with some coefficient, which is usually called uh, coupling. Then, for this to have dimension 4, this C should have dimension uh, satisfying this relation. And actually, this guy, C, could be identified with this guy, because when you sum up these two, these guys, you get 2. So, this assumption is consistent with this physical interpretation. And for now, uh, we believe that this parameter, which is a slight de de uh, deviation from this point, is interpreted as a web of Coulomb branch operator. And this guy is interpreted as a coupling, relevant coupling. And they are uh, related to each other by this direction. OK, so this is the interpretation of the parameters in the uh, algebra stuff itself. Okay, so this was the brief review about the Auschwitz Douglas theory. So uh, they are the n equals two super conformal theory with uh, uh, Coulomb branch operators of fractional dimensions, and they are described by massless ETS states like monopole or diode blocks. And uh, at the point in the Coulomb branch, they are they, they become massless at the same time, and you don't have Lagrangian for that theory. And in this talk. I particularly talked about this example, which was obtained from this theory by turning on Coulomb branch operator and a mass of the uh, quarks. Then you get Arjuna's Douglas type theory without a Lagrangian description, but with with the C three frames. Okay, is there any questions so far? Okay. Okay, if not, uh, let me continue. Okay, so I reviewed two ingredients. So let me now combine these two to discuss SU2 gauge theory with algebra star theory. How to combine? Well, in the previous section, we learned that there is an algebra star theory with SU3 frame symmetry. Although we don't know the Lagrangian of this theory, we know there is an SU3 frame symmetry. So we can try to gauge it. And actually, there is a, a study by these people about the flavor anomaly coefficient of this SU3. Flavor anomaly, I didn't write this. Flavor anomaly is something like so, yeah, SU3 flavor symmetry. So you have a symmetric column, uh, JA. 
then you can compute this uh, two-point function of uh, current, then you get something. That something is called the uh, Kraber anomaly. Uh, I think it's something, something like like this. And then G B C plus six over eight here. And we have sometimes four pi zero. That doesn't matter. This coefficient, proportional coefficient, is called Kraber anomaly. And uh, I'm not quite sure, but these people studied the rapid years of these theory and they calculated this. I'm uh, sorry, the first paper studied the gravity year, and the second paper studied some topological twisting or something using that kind of technology, and they calculated this k. And after some numerical coefficient, the k for this guy is 3. So we know the flavors now, the flavor unknown. Then why, why, that, it, why is that important? Well. When you gauge, when you try to gauge, for example, in this case, let me try to gauge SU2 subgroup of this SU3. Then what is the beta function contribution from this guy? Well, beta function contribution is uh, exactly this guy, because uh, the beta function contribution is uh, calculated by you know, calculating this kind of long loop diagram. But here, we have our first double center. And what's happened to here? Well, we have a coupling between gauge here and the current, right? So, in the calculation of the one loop beta function, we just need this coefficient. And actually, the one loop beta function contribution from this side is identical to this flavor of normal. So, we know this information, so we can calculate the beta function coefficient of this gauge, this C2 gauge. What's happening? Well, we have 3 minus uh, the contribution from the multiple which is minus 4 times mc, which is now minus 8. And this is negative, which means that the theory is asymptotically free. So you have no exact amount of Then, how about this? This is our starting point. In this case, we have two copy, I mean, copies of A1B4 theory, each of which has uh, SU3 free symmetry. And we are trying to gauge SU2 diagonal or SU2 subgroup of that flavor symmetry. And we added one fundamental. <coughs> then what happens to the beta function coefficient? Well, we have three from one A1B4, and we have three from one A1B4, and we have two from fundamental hyper, because the fundamental hyper has two here. Then we have the same minus A from vector multiple configuration. Then this guy is now vanishing, which means that the theory, this theory is conformal. And how? Gauge coupling is now exactly marginal. So you can discuss the similar analysis. You can, you can ask the same question of this theory here. So you have exactly marginal coupling, and you can compute A and C anomalies of these guys from the A and C anomalies of these constituents. And uh, this theory has U1 cubed flavor symmetry. Why is that? Because this guy has originally has SU3 flavor symmetry, but we are gauging SU2 subgroup of that. So here, there is an U1 flavor symmetry that left over, U1 left over here. And here, you also have U1. And there is also another U1 acting on the one fundamental hypermodic. Right? So in total, you have U1 cubed flavor symmetry. So this is, these are the properties of this level. And uh, because you have exactly marginal coupling, you can ask this question, what's happening at the strong coupling of this theory? If these guys are just a hypermultiple, you know everything, at strong coupling, well, the theory is dual to big coupling. Nothing drastic happens. But what about in this case? We don't know the theory of this theory. What's happening? To study that, let me discuss the cyber we think of. Um, today, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't talk about the detail of how to get into this card, how to get this card, but there is a way to get this cyber meeting card of this theory, which is actually genus 3 card. And uh, this card depends on these parameters. So this, this theory contains these parameters. And uh, we have marginal coupling, one marginal coupling, which is gauge coupling. And we have two dimension half relevant coupling coming from A1B4 sectors. We have three masses, and we have two 
Coulomb branch operators of dimension three hat because we have two A1 B4 theory and each of which has one Coulomb branch operator of dimension three hat. And there is dimension two operator, which is uh, coming from trace phi sphere of SU2 gauge uh, multiple. Now, let me look at what's happening when you turn off these fractional dimension guys. What you get is just the SU2 and F equal four curve. So if you don't have parameters of fractional dimension, you just have SU2 gauge theory curve with an F equal four, which is familiar to us. And in that case, tau is identified with the gauge coupling, and this u of dimension two is identified with the trace phi sphere. So this is a usual story of S theory. And our question is, what's happening to this picture when you recover these parameters of fractional dimension? And uh, because we identified tau with gauge coupling, we know uh, what is the what is the weak coupling, what is the strong coupling. So let me try to uh, draw this Seyer-Witten curve. Let me try to study this Seyer-Witten curve in this limit together with these parameters recovered. Then what's happening is this guy. When you go to the weak coupling of SU2, this Seyer-Witten curve splits into two sectors like this. And you can identify one sector with exactly the same as the uh, the cyber written curve of, of A1 B4 cell. And the other side of the curve is also identical to the curve of A1 B4 cell. And the curve in the middle is just the curve describing double boson and monopole. And in this case, double boson is associated with this pinch cycle, and monopole is associated with this cycle. And we, we can identify this curve as a curve for this description in which SU2 gauge coupling is very weak. So this tau is a tau of this guy. So this is a weak coupling limit of this SU2. But now, what's happening when you take a strong coupling limit, tau equals zero of this guy? Tau is a gauge coupling of this SU2. When you take this limit, you have a different spread of the same theorem, same curve, sorry, same curve. And on, on one side, you have another A1 D4 curve. And on the other side, you have different A1, B4 curve. And in the middle of these, you have a C2 curve, but now, double boson and monopoles are exchanged. Which means that you have a weak coupling description of this form that now, monopole and double bosons are exchanged. So this picture describes the weak coupling limit of this theory, that this theory and this theory are as dual, because monopole and double bosons are exchanged. So the weak coupling limit, uh, sorry, strong coupling limit of this guy is identical to weak coupling limit of this guy. And what's happened to these ultra stagger theory? Well, actually, parameters are mixed. So I put some, you know, uh, letters here. I mean, M and U are just uh, uh, mass and uh, level the Coulomb branch operator that the D side of the curve depends on some of the parameters, C1 and M1 and U1. And this side of the curve depends on C2, M2, U2. I mean, C2 doesn't change anything about this guy. C2 only uh, changes something in this side. So we can identify this parameter as a parameter of this guy. We can identify these parameters as parameters of this cell. But now, when you do the same thing here, then you have something different. Tilde is a linear combination of C, uh, for example, C1 tilde and C2 tilde are linear combination of C1 and C2. So you have different linear combination of the parameters of the same dimension. What I'm saying is the parameters of the same dimension could mix. Quantum theory analysis doesn't prohibit that. And actually, it happens. So this A1D4 theory is totally different from this A1D4 theory because parameters are different. And that's natural because we are we are taking S dual. In this side, we have double boson monopole, but in this side, they are exchanged. So you have magnetic description of the same theory with different parameters. And the magnetic side parameters in the magnetic side are just a linear combination of the parameters in the electric side. 
So do you know those combinations? Yes, 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 yes. I can show you that. No, no, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to prepare many things, so okay. yeah. I mean that. Yeah, but that that that's comparable. Yeah, sorry, I mean, today I, I cannot, I have no time to, you know, you know, express everything here, so I just put some pictures that, sure. that we can cover everything. Yeah. And yeah, so this is the first example. What we found in our first example is that, well, we have a generalization of s duality which connects strong coupling on one side and weak coupling on the other side. Between these two, we have some parameter mixing, as well as exchangement of double boson and monopole. And uh, so we believe this is a this is a generalization of S theory of S U two gauge stability is full frame. And uh, what is important is that parameters of this side is totally different from parameters of this side. So they are totally different uh, theories. But in total, the theory is uh, that's the S theory of this guy. Excuse me, aren't you naked the com field content of this uh, anomaly field gauging? Here you wanted to get SU2 uh, maintaining the uh, vanishing of beta function. Yep. But is the solution unique that you had to double the A1D4 together with one fundamental or would I engineer some other combo? That's a good question. I believe there are many options. I believe there are many options. Um, that's a good question. So, a good question. let me calculate. So in this case, we have a1, B4, twice, and one fundamental fiber. And what's the SU2 vector one? Um, contribution to the beta function coefficient is that we have three from one A1, B4, and we have another three because we have two A1, B4, and we have two from fundamental hyper. And we have minus eight from... Uh, but fundamental hyper is the choice you made. Yeah. yeah, okay. Those are the choices you made. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yes. you can also do, for example, mm -hmm. two plus two plus two plus two minus eight equals zero. Right? This is one solution to get zero. No, no, I want to keep A1D4. Okay, 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 okay. okay. And I know there is SU3, and I know I want to get SU2 subgroup. That's all I give you. Then is the solution you need. Okay, okay. Take eight. 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 For example, what about if you keep this guy, but for example, is there any solution for this thing? Okay. <laughs> you know, this is an odd number. This is even. So <laughs> the only possibility is to add something odd here. But there is a such a possibility, actually. You can add 2 plus 2 plus 1. These guys are fundamental. Fundamental. So what is this? Well, for SU2 vector, oh, sorry, gauge theory. Fundamental hyper is composed of Q and Q cube that I wrote in the text, so I mean, And these guys n equal one parallel. This guy is n equal one power, but the there's also conjugate. Right? And for SU2 gate symmetry, this guy, this guy is in the same representation. Right? Because you know, two representation, two bar representation are the same for SU2. So only in this SU2 gauge case, you can mix these guys. Which means that you could form some could impose this kind of condition, for example. So you have a half type of multiple, only in this SU2 gate theory. So you could have one. So, a priori, it seems possible to think of, well, uh, two hyper and one half, half hyper. It seems possible to think of. And beta function coefficient is zero. But in this case, you have an actually written anomaly. This theory is anomalous. So you cannot consider this. Thing. I mean, in the coefficient of beta function coefficient, it's consistent, but there is other 
if you go. So that's why I didn't go to that. So in that sense, our example is a minimal <coughs> possible generalization. Yeah. Thank you. But you can think of some larger and higher rank gauge theory, like the SUN gauge theory, then there are many options. <coughs> is there any question? Okay. okay. So because I only have two or three minutes more, so uh, I just uh, I just want to show you the second example in this uh, So the, the idea is that you can also gauge full SU3 flavor symmetry instead of SU2 sample. Then you can think of this kind of theory, which is conform. So now you have SU3 gauge group instead of SU2, and this guy is again conformal, and you have exactly marginal coupling, and you can calculate conformal anomalies. And the question is, what's happening at the strong coupling of this SU3? And this should be a generalization of SCU3 gauge theory with six flavor, which is also normal. But now we have algebra step of segment. So what's happened? Well, let me look at the uh, curve again. In this case, the side of rooting curve is genus four. And parameters of this guy, uh, the, the detail doesn't matter, but the, there is a marginal coupling. And the Coulomb branch operators are these guys, three halves, three halves, and two and three. When you turn off fractional guys, you again get SU3 and epic or six curve, and you can identify tau with the gauge coupling, UV uh, with the Coulomb branch operators of SU3 gauge theory, because you turn off fractional guys, so nothing drastic happens. But now, uh, you have two strong and weak coupling tasks of this theory, and the question is what happens in this limit when you recover this guy? The result is like this. In this recoupling limit of SU3, you get two B1, uh, A1, B4 sectors plus SU3. That's good because that's our starting point. So in this limit, we go to the weak coupling limit of this description. Then the question is what's happening in the strong coupling? In this case, you have something very, very, very mysterious. In this case, the curve splits into these pieces. The one, one piece is a piece is A1, B4, but the other guy is something very uh, different, which didn't appear in this discussion so far. So you can identify this theory as SU2 gauge theory plus A1, B4 sector plus some other sector. This is another type of Archer Stuckler theory. I mean, you can define that, but uh, uh, Dan Shi discussed uh, you know, many possibilities of Archer Stuckler theories, and this is one of the one of his possibilities. And what, I'm, what I want to say here is that in the case of SU3 gauging, this guy is dual to this guy. Especially if this SU3 gauging is strongly coupled, then th this SU2 gauging becomes weakly coupled. And this guy is a new Archer Stargirl theory, which didn't appear so far in this discussion. And this, this guy was uh, discussed in the paper by Dan Shi. But the thing is, well, Danshi discussed the flavor symmetry of this theory, and it, he said this theory has SU3 times SU2 flavor symmetry. So you can really gauge SU2 subgroup of this guy, but there is no prediction for the flavor anomaly, this K uh, that I erased. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, there's no, so far, there has, there has been no prediction for the flavor anomaly of this SU2 flavor symmetry, but we know this theory is conform. So we know what is the flavor anomaly of this guy. Well, that should be five. So that, we get zero beta function prediction. So this is our prediction for this algebra stuff theory, which was obtained from the discussion of this theory. And of course, the more anomalies and flavor symmetry, flavor symmetry matches between these. <coughs> okay, so this is a brief sketch of the second example. Okay, so let me summarize my talk. So it, our work discussed the generalization of S theory D4 for the n equals 2 super conformal series, including involving algebra Stargirl series. And the strong coupling and weak coupling are dual. I and mean, strong coupling maps to a weak coupling by S theory. And the S theory description sometimes contains different algebra Stargirl series, like this. In the first example, the theory is self dual under S theory transformation. But in the second example, we have different expression that in this side, if you have a strong coupling limit in this side, then you have a weak coupling limit in this side. So this is an S theory. And uh, we gave some prediction for that. And uh, 
if I say something about the possible future works, I believe this kind of new SDRD put some constraints on the operator spectrum or some physical quantity on these algebra spectral sectors. For example, these guys are dual. So you can go from weak coupling limit of this guy to weak coupling limit of this guy by changing its exact functional coupling. Or you can do the same thing for this guy. Then physical quantity, which, which is independent of the marginal coupling, should be independent under this transformation. And actually, super conformal index is independent of the exact marginal coupling. So I believe this theory puts some constraints on the, on the super conformal index of these algebra Douglas series which is quite mysterious. Okay, so this is I, this is everything I want to talk about today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, any further questions? Yes, sorry. Not that I waited. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. that. Uh, okay. Uh, can you tell us where uh, superconformal Q theory picture fits in in the larger scheme of things, meaning are they candidate for holography in particular, is that their main application, or uh, are they just in and by themselves are interesting to study because after all, CFTs are always interesting, or is there some place where they fit in string theory that uh, in, or and above these two considerations? What are the applications basically, I'm asking? Yeah. Okay, so um, um, in my opinion, one of the most interesting future work or interesting application of this SURD is to study the physics of each constituent of the Archer Stargate theory. Because so far, only little is known about Archer Stargate theory that we know the relation between algebra stuff and theory. That should put some constraints on the physics of algebra stuff and theory. That's, that's one thing I have. And uh, I also think there is a nice uh, discussion. There should be a nice discussion about the ADS CFT because this theory is conformal. So I mean, there's a prime that, for example, you can change this rank of the gauge group. And I believe there is an M5 rank description of this, this picture. So I believe, I believe this rank of the gauge groups should be related to the number of M5 rings. So if you increase some parameter of these guys, then you should get, I believe you get some something uh, in the gravity dual. I mean, something in which you can use gravity, I believe. So yeah, because this theory is conformal, so you can take sort of large M limit. But we have, for that, we have to identify which parameter of this discussion is related to the number of rings. We should do that. But I believe there is a nice discussion of uh, ADSC. And because, because in the case of Lagrangian, there is an uh, uh, ADSC I mean, So we discuss SC2 gauge theory with four flavor rate. Then you can increase this amount of the gauge group. And you can think of two n flavors. Then this is related to gravity dual solution in 11 dimensions, if n is large, if n is infinite. And there is a subtlety about this flavor that, that I believe, yeah, in this case, you can discuss the gravity dual. That was studied by Marta uh, Sena and Guy Rito several years ago. So I think we can do a similar thing. Just a very quick follow, very quick follow up. Can we learn anything about the non-perturbative physics of non-conformal non uh, theories from this? But non-perturbative, but non-conformal. Can you break conformal symmetry and still maintain information about non-perturbative results? Uh, I see. I think that's possible. I think that's possible. So for example, in one side of the theory, you can break conformal symmetry by adding some operator perturbation or by adding some dev or something, then we can, I believe we can identify what's happening in the dual, dual side. But because they are dual, the result should be dual. So I believe they should lead to some duality for non-conformal non theory. But that's quite, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a question? Yeah. You, you 
you give a prediction for the 3C6 favor and online? So, yes, yes. Um, is, are there any suggestions for how to check that? Any oh. Any ways of computing that? It's a good question. How do you verify it? Um, that's a good question. Do you verify it? They were a lot Um. <laughs> So far, I, in, I believe, as far as I understand, there is no other check. The well, only guess, check I is guess that you could look at similar systems in current history. And see that you get the same answer, but that's, that's possible. But yeah. there's no way to do bootstrap or something like that. So. Yeah, that group, the group bootstrap thing for this analysis is uh, our you know, you know, dream, right? I mean, we are dreaming some such kind of thing, but uh, for that, I believe you have to study more examples and uh, collect some you know, general structure or general properties. Yeah, but I believe that could be possible. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we could think of S theory, more examples of S theory, including these mysterious theory, then we could probably check. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Okay, let's go on. Wrap it up since we're running a little late. And, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, a quick question. Can you simply explain the distribution of the six the In the field theory on the entire. Uh, its relationship with the six dimensional of the Six dimensional. Yeah. Six dimensional what theory? Super, 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 super field theory. Yes. yes. Oh, how many super symmetries do you have? I mean, uh, times zero, for example? Or anything? For example, you know, one. And you go one. Or you need to be. Because I have some simple idea that I would like. If there's four dimensions, four dimensions are some conformal theory, for example, angle to or you go to four kind of kind of only torus compacted position to the same Okay, okay. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. I see. I believe there should be such kind of thing. Yeah. This class has. Yeah, it's a class S discussion, right? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, actually, this is a generalization of Guy Otto program, actually. Yeah, I mean, the beginning of the generalization. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so, so, for example, we can start with M5 brain, wrapping on the Riemann surface. Then on the M5 brain, you have 2,060 super component theory. And uh, wrapping M5 brain meaning, means uh, you have to reduce the 60 theory to 40 theory. But uh, we have such a, such a description if you don't have this guy. I mean, <laughs> if the theory is asymptotically free, we have such a description. Like, uh, you can wrap, in this case, I don't know how many M5, I believe, uh, two. Two M5 range, wrapping on S2 with a puncture. And we put some boundary function here, PPS boundary function, so that uh, we are keeping n equals to super symmetry for you. Then this guy has 60 or more. When you wrap it on this S2, S2 in 4D, you get n equals 2 as C or P. And you can construct A1 D4 theory by adding one more puncture. And this guy has SU2 frame symmetry and this guy has U1 frame symmetry. So this guy combines into you know SU3 frame symmetry of this guy. But you can gauge this SU2 by adding 2 to this S2. Then you have sphere with two punctures, just U1 symmetry. Then you get A1 B4 theory gauged by this part describes SU2 vector So you have SU2 here. And here you have the same thing as the left left side. So you have another A1 theory. This quiver gauge theory, which is asymptotically free theory, is obtained by wrapping M5 then on this Riemann surface. But this is asymptotically free. And the question is how to add this guy here. And I believe that's a very good question. Yeah, and I want to know the answer, but I'm not sure for now. That's a very good question. I'm not sure how to take into account additional hyper here. I believe you should do something here, but I'm not quite sure. But that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.